pray with me. Have you ever been positioned to pray for someone who was very sick? A particular someone with a feeding tube in their throat. Tubes running down their throat. And did I mention sleeping in a bubble? Now this person had been in that position since birth. And now the doctors are certain they will have to trach him within six days because he is not getting enough oxygen in his breathing. Deep down in the crevice of your knowledge center, your spirit, you know if you don't receive a miracle from God, there will be a category five size problem ahead. To stand in the presence of God and ask for a miracle with doubts seems like it would be so intimidating and useless and so not well. Oh, but to stand in the presence of God and ask in faith for a miracle and get it? <coughs> Excuse me, I can tell you it can teach you a lot about life, death, about ourselves, and about God. Especially when that someone, that person you're praying that miracle for is your newborn four-hour-old son. Maybe if this happened to you, maybe you would expect things to work out the way you expect them to, huh? Maybe you'd expect God to heal through your prayers in a dramatic, quick, and easy way, huh? After all, that's the way it happened all through the Bible, in the Old Testament, and with Jesus. Well, I found myself confronted with the unexpected. I didn't expect to spend so much time in the hospital. I didn't expect disbelief, humiliation, and so much indecisiveness in the staff. I didn't expect to cry so much. I didn't expect to be so bold at times. I didn't expect to be so frustrated at times. I didn't expect it to take so long. I didn't expect to learn so much. I remember the fifth day, the memory is forever imprinted in my mind. I remember saying with tears flooding my eyes, nothing can keep us from receiving our miracle, nothing. I remember saying that to my own self again and again, nothing can keep us from receiving our miracle, nothing, not one thing. This was not just a strong hope, this was not just wishful thinking. This was great faith, not great faith on my part, but the kind of great faith God will impart to you if you let him. See, I have turned to God many times throughout the course of my life asking for miracles, but I knew, I knew, I knew this prayer had been answered. I knew it was a done deal. I couldn't believe anything else, see. Now, I've been accused of being stubborn, and I suppose it's justified. In fact, I have stubborned myself into a, a lot of troubling situations, including concussions in boxing. See, when the guy I was boxing had more experience and muscle behind his stubborn than I, there it is. Hey now, just like stubbornness can be used in what you may call a negative force, it may also be channeled into a positive righteous force called persistence and endurance. I have found that to be one of the most important spiritual attributes of the Christian life. Hey, by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. A lack of endurance is one of the greatest causes of defeat, especially in prayer. See, we don't wait well, do we? Seems we are into microwaving. God, on the other hand, is into marinating. Listen, as you persist, your faith will grow and you will know deep down inside you're going to win. And let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we shall reap if we do not grow weary. Galatians 6, 9. See, my persistence was rewarded when I saw Sandman breathing without all those hookups. At that moment, every hour and every tear invested became worthwhile and worth the wait. Well, a bunch, a bunch of much plus a whole lot and then some, and I'm still learning how nice it is, see? A whole bunch of much. I serve at the pleasure of the king. See, picture this, a group of tourists visiting a picturesque village in Europe who walked by an old man sitting beside a fence. In a rather patronizing way, one tourist asked, 
Were any great men born in this village? The old man replied, nope, only babies. I've learned that no one is born a prayer hero either. They are shaped and refined on the practice field of life daily. A Hollywood talent judge said Fred Astaire, one of the top dancers and actors of my time, can't sing, can't act, but can dance a little. Now I'm sure the devil through people have passed judgment on me at times in my life. Can't sing, can't write, can't play drums, can't preach, can't can 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 pray a little though. I thank God for his grace, mercy, patience, and commitment to me. See, I've stumbled forward way more than backward in life, see. From this and other prayer journeys, from failures as well as victories, and from hundreds of hours of study, I've formed some thoughts to share with you. I believe and I have prayed these thoughts will answer many questions such as, number one, is prayer really necessary? If so, why? Isn't God sovereign? Doesn't that mean he does what he wants, when he wants? where he wants and can quit whenever he wants to? Doesn't sovereignty mean he accomplishes what, where, and when he wants? If so, why pray? Number two is God's will for a Christian automatically guaranteed or is it linked to prayer and other factors? Number three, why does it often take so long to get a prayer answered? Why is persistence required? Jacob wrestled with God. Is that what we are to do in prayer? I don't like the thought of wrestling with God, do you? Number four, what about prayer for the lost? How can I be more effective? I used to get a little frustrated trying to think of new ways to ask God to save people. I thought he wanted to save them. Then why do I feel I'm trying to talk him into it? Is there a better way? Do I ask for their salvation again and again and again or simply petition or ask him once and then just thank him in faith? Number five, what about spiritual warfare? If the devil is defeated and Christ has all authority, shouldn't we just forget about the devil? Does God bind the devil or do we? Number six, what exactly is intercessory prayer? And don't just tell me it's standing in the gap. Enough religious quotes and spiritual slang. I know the thought is taken from the Bible, but what does it mean? Number seven, what about protection? Is everything that happens to me or my family allowed by God? Or is there something I need to do to procure or secure our safety? Number eight, how do we bear one another's burdens according to Galatians 6, 2? Number nine, is there a right time for answers to prayers or does the timing depend on me? Are you tired of these questions? I am, so I'll stop. You may even be tired of asking yourself some of them. I know I was. Many people stopped asking long ago and many people stopped praying too. Please don't do that. Keep asking. Keep praying. I've discovered that the right answer comes with the right question. I've also discovered that God is not offended by a sincere question. God won't satisfy the skeptic and he is not pleased with unbelief, but he loves an honest seeker. Those who lack and ask for wisdom, he does not rebuke. James 1.5 See, God is a good dad. Will you pray this prayer with me? Father, we need more understanding, not more knowledge. We have so much of it now that we have become confused. Yes, and even cynical at times because our knowledge has not always worked. In fact, Father, our Bibles oftentimes contradict our experience. Oh, Father, we need some answers. We need a marriage of theology and experience. We are tired of cloaking our ignorance in robes of blind obedience and calling it spirituality. 
We are tired of religious exercises in, that make us feel better for a while but bear little lasting fruit. We are tired of a form of godliness without power. Help us please in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's get into this. We'll call this exercise two of pray with me. Because I said so. I remember the piano teacher wrapped my knuckles with a ruler because I asked a simple question. Why? Whack! Because I said so. Now do it. I still wish sometimes I could wrap her knuckles with a stick and not tell her why. Don't worry, I'm over it and have forgiven her. Anyway, we'll deal with forgiveness and inner healing in another book at another time. Listen, seriously, none of us wants to do something just because someone says do it, do we? Oh, I know, God requires things of us at times without the full knowledge of why, but they are usually occasional obedience and trust issues. This is not the way he expects us to live life on a regular basis. See, we are not programmed robots who never ask why. God does not require us to have an ostrich mentality. That's head in the sand or blind faith. God requires us to want to get to know the facts about him. God allows us to have our own will, a will to decide for ourselves. Number three, I wonder why. God has given us a book full of answers to the whys of life. The one I'm interested in is why pray. I'm not speaking of why in the sense of needing this or that. Obviously, we ask because we want or need something. I'm speaking of why in the context of God's sovereignty. Do my prayers really matter all that much? Isn't God going to do what he wants anyway? Most people, even if just subconsciously, believe just that. The proof is in their prayer life or their lack of. Questions. Can my prayers actually change things? Does God need me to pray or does he just want me to pray? Some would argue an omnipotent God does not need anything including our prayers. Listen, can God's will on earth be frustrated or not accomplished if I don't pray? Many would brand me a heretic for even raising the question. But these and other questions deserve answers. I've discovered that understanding the why of doing something can be a great motivating force. The opposite is also true. As a kid, I wondered why the sign said no diving in the shallow part of the pool until I bumped my head on the bottom of the pool. As a kid, I used to wonder why I shouldn't touch that pretty red glow on the stove until I burned my hand. As a kid, I used to wonder why in the woods the fellow in front of me said duck. I thought, I don't want a duck. Pow! I didn't like him telling me what to do. Pow! Now I duck. See? Number four, I need to know. Someone said to err is human, to repeat it is stupid. Now I'm sure I've qualified for the two or one times or more, <laughs> but not these three I've talked about in the previous chapter. Now, I know why, however, we're not talking about bumps, burns, and bruises here. We're talking about eternal destinies. We're talking about homes, marriages, the welfare of people we love, and uh, revival in our cities. The list continues. When God says pray, I want to know it will matter. I'm not into religious exercises and my time is valuable, so is yours. Know that you can do more praying after you pray, but you cannot do more than pray until you've prayed. Prayer is striking the winning blow, see. Service is gathering up the results, see. 
If God is going to do something regardless of whether or not we pray, then he doesn't need us to ask and we don't need another waste of time. If it's all case sera, sera. If on the other hand, but wait, I need to know if prayers are what got my son Sandman here. I need to know if I was spread spared in the earthquake because someone prayed for me. I need to know if my prayers can make a difference between heaven and hell for someone. Is prayer really necessary? The real question is, does a sovereign, all-powerful God need our involvement or not? Is prayer really necessary? If so, why? I believe prayer is necessary. Our prayers can bring revival. They can bring healing. Our prayers can change a nation. Strongholds can come down when and because we pray. God shapes the world by prayer. The more praying there is in the world, the better the world will be. Prayer gives us a mightier force against evil. See, the prayers of God's saints are the capital stock of heaven by which God carries on his great work upon earth. I believe God's conditions, I believe God conditions the very life and prosperity of his cause on prayer. I want to share why I believe this so much. Let me give you some spiritual backing for this belief first.